Hello, my name is Lukash and welcome to the setting up Foreman or Cotillo development environment. So there are a couple of options you, um, you can take uh, to set up Foreman or, uh, or Cotillo. The most recommended uh, option uh, would be to use our forklift, uh, which is a project uh, you can download from our GitHub. If you go to the Foreman uh, organization on GitHub, you will find a repository called forklift. And uh, what it is, is this is basically a Vagrant setup uh, with Ansible um, roles or plays. Um, so if you check out uh, this uh, this one uh, or clone this one, uh, all you need to do is actually find, uh, find a 99 local YAML example uh, file and copy it over to you know, uh, 99 local YAML already done that and then you, what you need to do is actually you need to uh, replace uh, dummy text replace me with your github name because we'll be talking about development environments and development setups and our you know set of ansible uh, modules in place will actually set up you uh, git forks so you can immediately start working and for that one the, the, the configuration or yaml uh, or Ansible needs to know your uh, GitHub username. Once you have that, uh, let's have a look on uh, what what's available here. So if we grab uh, the 99 local YAML example, or we'll see a couple of uh, options. These are, let, let, let me call these uh, Vagrant profiles. Uh, I'm not sure it, how, how Vagrant calls these, but these are the development boxes, um, VMs that Vagrant can uh, get you up and running. And before I get to actually running Vagrant, what you need to do actually is install Vagrant. So I'm using Fedora here, Fedora 33, I guess. So all you need to do is install Vagrant. It will pull a couple of dependencies, including Ruby. And actually, if you're on Linux, you'll likely need some virtualization, of course, because Vagrant is basically uh, a tool that simplifies configuration and, and, and um, you know deployment of um, virtualized images or virtualized machines. So essentially, all you need to do is DNF install Vagrant Libvirt, which will pull Vagrant itself, will pull Ruby, a couple of other dependencies, and uh, it will work you know out of box you can do this as a regular user as well in that case vagrant will connect to the libvirt what's called session instance or session um, um, vm or it will create basically vms in your profile in your home uh, directory uh, so if you if we come back to the grab command We'll see a couple of uh, couple of um, boxes. I think these are called boxes, but basically VMs. And a couple of these are interesting. So first, what the the Vagrant will do is it will of course download uh, and send us either seven or eight, depending on your choice. Uh, on your choice, and then it will uh, deploy the machine, start it up, and then uh, uh, Vagrant will call what's called provision script which will call ansible to install uh, and configure things for you in case of centos 7 catella devel which is the recommended uh, box you should probably use it will give you actually uh, all the backend services which are needed to run uh, catella and form and catella and it will give you git checkouts uh, of foreman uh, of Cotello plugin on, on, on and remote execution plugin as well, which is now dependency of uh, Cotello. So the way you do this is you say Vagrant up. That's how Vagrant works. Now, uh, if you do just Vagrant up, it will just uh, download uh, empty CentOS 7 um, image and it will start it. Uh, so what you want to also to do is to then call Vagrant provision, or, although you can do this in a single command, just like that. So Vagrant up provision, and then name of uh, f of box, which is 10 to 7, cut to whatever. 
We do have a CentOS 8 compatible, and this is work in progress. For now, I'd probably stick with CentOS 7, but I think in a couple of months we'll have CentOS 8 uh, ready, so you can start using CentOS 8 as well. If you want to actually uh, install Foreman and a couple of more uh, plugins, what you can do is you can use the uh, CentOS 7 Luna level box, which is essentially uh, plugins which are shipped with Red Hat Satellite, which is one of the downstream products uh, that Foreman is Foreman project uh, is used, um, and so this will get you. Uh, Things like boot disk discovery, remote execution, Concello, OpenSCAP, and a couple of others. So you can use that as well if you're interested in maybe checking out latest developments of of uh, satellite, or you know you just want to send a patch to one of these plugins. This can get you easily um, uh, a development box. Now I'm not running the command because I already have a, a VM running. And provision. So what I what you can do then after the command is done is vagrant ssh santos catello devil. Once you have that, you're uh, signed into uh, the development box. For some reason, the vagrant's giving me these funny, uh, funky messages. I'm not sure how to actually get rid, rid of them. Uh, I've changed my locale. I've actually undefined locale. I changed my ssh configuration to not pass locale. I've done everything I could, but these are. You know, coming, uh, whatever, and we are now on the CentOS Cotella level. Sign in as a vagrant user, it's a regular user, by the way. And you should have a sudo, uh, sudo um, permissions, and I think password should be vagrant. Uh, Anyway, um, it's definitely in our README. So if, we, if you go to um, forklift, uh, the foreman slash forklift GitHub repo, you'll see uh, extensive README with uh, additional information, uh, things like how to set up, you know, NFS, you know, uh, folder sharing or directory mount or SSHFS as well. If you're into, you know, share, sharing files over the network, that's what you can do. Um, and here's a little tip. If you're uh, if you're using a VS Code, Visual Studio Code, there's actually SSH plugin which, if you install it, um, VS Code will connect to a remote box, which it can be the the CentOS Catal level box VM, and it will actually install a Visual Studio Server instance uh, in there underneath uh, your home directory dot VS Code and dash server, I think. And then you know your your your, your editor it will act like a client, so you would, you are able to open up a, a folder there and experience a native development environment. So um, so you can do anything pretty much uh, in your editor, edit files, edit folders, run commands, um, anything. So that's uh, that's a tip for you. So as you can see, we have a. Foreman checkout, remote execution, and Catello checkout. And also, Foreman has been um, configured with with um, uh, both plugins. So if you go to Bundler D, these are actually local um, local RB. So. Um, these plugins were enabled. Local RB are not uh, added to Git. These are in Git ignore. So that's how you enable development plugins in Foreman. Um, so uh, all you need to do now is uh, do, and the provisioning script might already have done that. So um, you can't go wrong if you do bundle install. It's pretty quick. And npm install. And this is all covered in our uh, cont contributing guide. So these are the regular commands you need to do every time you uh, make a new checkout. I won't run this one. Uh, it's a little bit longer uh, to complete. Uh, and then uh, what you need to do is things I'll be covering in a minute in the regular setting up format from scratch, uh, bundle exec migrate by bundle exec uh, seed. Maybe you want to change a password. Um, 
and you want to do uh, to start an instance so that's um, fun fact we are actually using a gem a library a ruby library called foreman that's just a co coincidence it's a different project we are the foreman on, on github this is foreman on github and it's essentially a small tool that uh, allow, allows you to run um, several processes in in one it's not a terminal emula emulator though so for example if you want to start the debug debugging session in one work but it's essentially you know concatenating output uh, standard output and error of two processes because for for foreman you need to run both uh, ruby on rails process and then also uh, um, uh, java node.js webpack process which, uh, which which handles the java um, files once you have that, you just connect to port 5000 of the of the VM, and you're good to go. Start development. You know, Git should be installed as well. Let me just stop. Git should be installed, right? And uh, you're good to go. Um, one more thing: if you want to connect to this host, you know. Its host name is actually, you know, uh, example.com. It's the domain. This is uh, FQDN. Very unlikely this will work out of box. If you type this into your browser, it won't find it. So a couple of um, things you can do. First, the ugly solution is to edit your ATC hosts file and, you know, enter the IP address of this host, which is 122. That's the default Libre network, um, and uh, at, the, at the entry there, there's actually a Libvirt, sorry, a Vagrant plugin that does this automatically for you, and a couple of other options you can you can take as well. So it really depends. By the way, Vagrant should work on Linux, should work on Mac OS using Vert uh, uh, Virtual Box, I think it's the it's the product or project, and. It should work on Windows as well. So, so that's your uh, that's your option number one, running Cathelo. Uh, we do not provide a clean Foreman. Uh, I mean Foreman Core box with just Foreman Core installed. So in that case, you can just install Cathelo and it should be fine. Um, however, it might be might be changing in the future. Uh, but for now, it's just uh, Catello. We do have a couple of other uh, devil unboxes, uh, like Hammer Smart Proxy is there, Hammer and Unflow. So if you're into, uh, into, if, into these components, you can install these as well. Now, the second option is install Foreman Core from scratch. So um, for that, what you need to do is obviously I have a uh, server here uh, with uh, account foreman and I've, I've made a, a git uh, check out of uh, foreman um, git up repository here so uh, first uh, we need to decide which version of ruby and node.js we want to use so for the first one what we can do is we can grab a gem file, which is a file that holds uh, dependencies we, we use, and then you, you're looking for gray, uh, Rails gem. In our case, this is just a weird syntax, but it essentially means 6.0. So if you go Google out 6.0 Ruby version, you'll quickly find out. It's a little bit uh, hidden in the official documentation, but you'll, you'll find a couple of uh, blog posts and these will suggest that for 6.0, um, we always we are always a little bit behind because catching up on on Rails is uh, you know uh, never-ending you know uh, story. So um, uh, currently, 6.1 or two is already out. And but you'll find that 6.0 is Ruby 2.5, 6 or 7. So any of these versions we usually do provide. Uh, sorry, we do support when we do test with on our contributor uh, page uh, on our um, site. You will also find that if you go uh, to there's a link to our, our Jenkins, you know, continuous integration tool. You'll also find metrics of all the Ruby versions. We test all the PRs and all the 
uh, you know main branches and, and st stable branches with and then you'll find the same ruby 2.5 6 and 7 uh, for this moment but in the future that might change so always check that so we have now uh, versions of ruby now for the node what we uh, what we do is uh, you can uh, actually uh, edit github workflows js tests uh, we do have our, you know, JavaScript tests uh, we run all, all via the GitHub Actions, and here we see we we are testing with uh, 12 and 14. So probably 14 would be good fit uh, for us. So let me just quickly switch over to the uh, root uh, shell I have here, the same server. So we're gonna we're gonna DNF install. We're gonna DNF install Ruby. Uh, sorry before before doing that if you have a, if you have a, um, if you're lucky then your uh, your linux distribution does provide the versions you need to uh, you need to have one more thing uh, for postgres because form foreman requires postgres that's the uh, SQL database of our choice that one we currently were need uh, essentially anything that is higher than 10 so 10 11 12 will will do the job uh, so the, so you, you'll need to keep these in mind as well. So for uh, if you're happy, your distribution does uh, provide uh, you with the proper versions. If not, you uh, have a couple of options. First, you can just try the, the, the latest and greatest version. So if that's maybe Ruby 3.0, 3.1, you can try. And But if you fail, of course, you can ask, but unlikely you know we'll be fixing that very soon so maybe if you are able to patch uh, patch these uh, changes you can do that uh, expect uh, problems with uh, with rails rather than uh, with our project and the same for node.js so i'd really recommend you to stick with the versions we use and if you're using fedora uh, centos 8 stream or 8 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, you're lucky because there we have a, uh, we have a modules uh, feature, also known as, I think, application stream for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I mean, that, 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 that is a nice feature that allows you to actually mm, switch over uh, to a different version of uh, some software or stack. In this case, Postgres, uh, Node, and also Ruby has, all have different versions. So actually what you can do is you can pick a particular version. In my case, I've enabled here a Ruby 2.7, a Node.js 14, and Postgres, I'm sticking with the 10 version, which is good enough for me. Um, so the command is uh, DNF module enable, and now the, the name of the module. So Ruby colon 2.7, or you would say Node.js colon 14, or Postgres colon 10. So I've already done that. And then I did DNF install Ruby. You also need Ruby Devil because we'll be compiling some uh, some uh, packages. Node.js and Postgres, uh, PostgreSQL server. So these are all installed and we should be good to go. So let me just um, do one more thing. We'll be installing some Ruby gems. Um, well, essentially uh, many of them actually, as well as Node.js packages. And some of these uh, require some development libraries as well. Things like libvirt, you know, OpenSSL, XML, uh, and, and, and others do require development header files and, 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 and um, libraries. So these, this command will get you uh, for Fedora. You can do essentially the same on Debian Linux or Arch Linux or any other OS uh, out there. Um, names of the packages will be probably different as well as you might have a different version of Ruby or Node or Postgres, but as long as it's within those uh, expected versions, you should be fine. So let me switch back over to, to the form and get checkout. Now um, we are all set to actually uh, do installation of RubyGems. So what you want to do is bundle install. This is the same. 
and I've already done that so it's pretty quick. Uh, what I did actually is um, when I was uh, running bundling stuff for the first time, I gave it a path just like that. Vendor. Vendor is a directory that already exists if you do a checkout of uh, form and project. Uh, it is empty, so you can use that because by default, Bundler, or that's that's a um, Ruby gem, you know, uh, library that uh, handles uh, and command and handles um, dependencies, uh, which reads the gem file file and then installs all the dependencies. And by default, it would attempt to install those into uh, a system path which as a regular user without permissions, this would fail. So what I did was I'd actually uh, executed this command with this uh, path vendor, uh, and it actually remembers that in a bundler config file. So here it is a setting. And then it installs everything into a vendor and directory. Um, so you, know, uh, you can always then delete this directory and start over if you run into issues. Second command you want to use is, uh, of course, npm install. I won't run this. It's a little bit longer, uh, about a minute or two. And once you have that, it should create a node modules subdirectory as well. So we have that uh, these required uh, uh, dependencies for both Ruby on Rails. That's the, one of the processes we need to run. And the second one is actually the webpack, which is a JavaScript uh, um, library and it runs within Node.js. Now we are all set and we need to uh, create configuration, which is pretty much, pretty much easy. What you need to do is copy a file called settings YAML example to config settings YAML. And the second one is database YAML example, copy over to config database yaml these files both files are in git ignore so when you're you know git, if i do git status i should see no um, uh, unstaged files there it's taking a little bit of time i'm not sure why but uh, but uh, uh, that should be okay i'm not sure why i do see actually some changes in within vendor directory that shouldn't be there uh, but I think uh, we, what we can do is get reset hard head. I should do it. Anyway, uh, we have a configuration of format and database. Uh, I urge you to review both files, settings YAML and database. There are some settings you might want to choose and, and uh, set. However, I you know you can start your first format instance just without any change just keep in mind that development uh, which is the default environment we will be starting it will attempt to connect to postgres uh, running on localhost and database name foreman and then if you're running tests it will also expect foreman dash test database uh, to be there so what we uh, can do or we what we must do actually is switch over back to uh, root and we need to initialize our Postgres. So Postgres.setup, these are instructions for Fedora, for other distributions. This might be a little bit different. I'm not sure. I've already done that. So it is telling me that this is already done. It's created the empty database, uh, like meta database and empty database within Lavarlip or PG SQL data. Now we need to create those databases, which is pretty much easy. Uh, we need to we need to sign in as a Postgres user. By default, this on this on Red Hat on Federal Systems Postgres is disabled, so you can't actually log in. So we need to provide it a shell. So we're we're giving it a shell uh, bin bash. So now we're in the home directory, and uh, what we want to do is create the user called Foreman. We'll make make him um, a super user. So that's that's dash, dash s. And dash s and uh, foreman already exists of course and then create uh, the date database so create database foreman it already exists and foreman test already exists all right so that's all we need to do uh, to have false uh, to have database and let's just uh, enable 
enabled now from PostgreSQL and the PostgreSQL is running as a service. Um, and those two databases are where um, were enabled. There's one more thing actually. What we want to do is actually enable access to to uh, form uh, to the form and user what i like to do is um, usually if you if you edit this pghba configuration files you'll see peer and an ident here and ident here what i like to do is i change the method to trust for the local unix domain socket and for the local ipv4 and 6 connections because you know there's no valuable data and um, in these databases for me and it's just localhost as well so i just if you if you turn this to trust it will basically from um, uh, postgres will uh, allow the users from these uh, uh, connections automatically so if you edit if you've edited this file you need to restart from uh, postgres server but i've already done that so uh, we are good um, so we are all set we have our gem files our regems i mean we have our uh, npm modules uh, database is all set uh, and the, the last thing you need to do is create the database tables which is uh, done using bundle exec rake task uh, rake db migrate which will create a database tables and it will you'll see uh, a little bit of uh, stream of, of, of migrations we acquired or gathered over the time a couple of migrations four minutes I don't know 12 years old we might uh, squash some of these already I think there was a PR so you, sh you should see a little bit less of these migrations the second thing you want to do is seed some initial data because uh, former needs some let's say installation medias or organizational locations and things like that so dbc will do that and also setting up some templates and everything getting you up and running now the last thing by default seed will create you also uh, an api user and and super user that's the admin the first account but it will actually um will actually uh set you a random password so what you can do is bundle exec rake there's permissions reset uh, task which will actually uh, reset your password to something you can work with and you can always change this password later in the user interface or over the api or command line client as well a couple of warnings there we'll fix these eventually and um, we are all set i think we are all set so a couple of ways you can start format but one of the most recommended one would be running the mentioned foreman uh, gem which will start two processes rails and webpack and now rails is uh, listening on localhost uh, 5000 so if you go to http 5000 localhost you'll see our login screen here you can see uh, puma uh, web uh, web server uh, starting up and it's listening on uh, 5000 all the local host interfaces so you can go there uh, log in as admin and change me and start working on on a patch or something so that's pretty much it uh, that's what i have uh, for you today so hopefully this was helpful and um I'll hear you soon.